hotel seek aid from traditional and spiritual healers in the inaugural episode of searching for a god by me godwin asidiba i delve into the spiritual world recounting the story of a witch doctor and her clientele who turn to god for assistance the bar before it seeking healing so here are details of the assignment searching for a god <laughs> Ghana, when a baby is born, it's a big joy. Children are seen as wealth, a higher status, and a way to carry on the family. For the first seven days, the newborn stay inside because Ghanaians believe this time is when the baby is most at risk, both physically and spiritually. During these days, people think the baby is like a traveler moving between the spirit world and our world. Thus, a believe that the baby might choose to go back to the spirit world. So, for those seven days, they are called strangers. After that, they are officially welcomed with a special naming ceremony. This tradition and the idea of spiritual healing come from moments like these woven into the lives of almost every person in Ghana. When born the very first day of birth, you see very feeble. It grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and becomes a uh, black white man Godwin Asidiba. Hmm? Uh, you were given a name from your origin and you say you have become a Christian so you give up your original name and you adopt some crazy name you say it's a church name uh, I won't begrudge you because you are lost you must find yourself and return to your roots. So when you fail to recognize that you are both physical and spiritual, what do you expect? You must be lost. We don't want anyone to say it is a lie. Yeah. So you can come and have a look at it yourself before we set the fire. Growing up, the sight of spiritual charms always intrigued me, captivating the attention of everyone who happened to pass by. Now, as an adult, the mysteries behind this phenomenon linger in the mind, prompting me to embark on this curious journey of my life. The quest to unravel the unknown in the spiritual realm has become an adventure pushing the boundaries of what you and I may not fully comprehend. In the captivating tales of Techiman, whispers an elderly figure renowned as both a traditional healer and a witch doctor beckon with intrigue. Finding her shrine proved surprisingly uncomplicated. The recognition she has earned as a witch doctor acted as a compass, guiding me effortlessly through the streets of the Chimanyoso. Nana Abna Komfo, a name that resonates with simplicity yet carries weight of ancient wisdom. On arrival, my team and I patiently awaited to be summoned. A steady stream of people flowed into Nana Abna Komfo's dwelling. Some arrived on foot, others in cars, all seeking solace and healing from the spiritual realm. Her clientele mirrors a diverse spectrum. Everyday citizens, notable figures in society, even senior government officials. 
after an hour of anticipation, the renowned witch doctor emerged, explaining now, that yeah, yeah, she needed to uh, consult with the gods regarding yeah, yeah, our arrival. Yeah. Fortunately, the divine verdict favored us, granting permission for our entry. With bated breath, I stepped into her abode, guided by strict instructions. I walked gently into the realm where the ordinary meets the extraordinary. The air was thick with anticipation as we ventured into the sacred space, eager to unravel the mysteries held within the folds of Nana Abna Comfort spiritual haven. The journey into the heart of tradition and spiritual healing began, unfolding at the intersection of faith, reverence and the unseen forces that shape the lives of those who seek solace within the Abla Comfort realm. This is the Nana Jendu territory in Techiman Yoso, and what you're seeing here are gods called the Nana Jendu. And this woman right behind me, who is Nana Abna Komfor, has been a priestess who has served these gods for over three decades. She tells me that a number of people here in Techiman come to her for spiritual healing, people who have mental ill challenges, and a lot more. She has claimed to have healed a number of people who come to her with these challenges. Now, she tells me that in a month or a year, she has to please the gods, and this is what she does. They either kill a fowl, a cat, or whatever instruction that the gods will lead her to do. So you can clearly see some blood stains around, some flies hovering around, and clearly these are some of the things that pleases the gods here to continue to make them active to do the work that they're supposed to do. She claims none of her children have been sick for the past years because the girls are pleased and they do take care of her and her family. At 75 years, a mother of 10, she has not only tended to the well-being of those in need, but has also sown the seeds of her wisdom. She has trained her children to step into her shoes when the time comes, ensuring that the legacy of healing and compassion continues to thrive. Okay. 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 With the morning sun painting the sky, a new day dawns upon the spiritual sanctuary. A silent procession unfolds as patients, their faces a mixture of hope and reverence, enter the shrine. Here, the bow before the Nanajin de Gods, seeking protection and guidance. Within five minutes, the session is done. The 
the sorcerer prepares a protective potion for them to drink. Very dark in color, there's a mad rush for it here. Moto, as it's been called, is meant to protect them from bad spirits and direction from the gods. I don't so <laughs> Traditional medicine comprises of the beliefs of even people within a particular area. Because maybe what I believe in, you don't believe in that. So we have the one, those that can be explained, that is the explicable and then inexplicable. Because, for example, people who claim that, look, they can pray on water, give it to you, and you'll be healed. And yes, it happens. So those things cannot be explained how it is done. And that is where it goes beyond the physical into the metaphysics. So these are issues that maybe I cannot convince you because of what you believe in. But what I believe in is what I believe in. And that too, you can't challenge me about that. Within the walls of this deplorable sanctuary, patients find solace and recovery under the watchful gaze of both the witch doctor and the unseen forces that guide her. As they gather here, united as a family within the walls of this sanctuary, each patient carries a story of severe suffering. Meet Gidu James, a 35-year-old soul who has been under the care of the witch doctor for six months, grappling with the aftermath of a debilitating stroke. A decade spent working in Italy was marred by an unfortunate twist of fate. Hospital Upon returning to Ghana, a desperate journey ensued. His heart and money dwindled within the sterile walls of hospitals and churches, each promising a cure. It was only when hope seemed elusive that he found solace in the healing hands of the witch doctor. See. No man could eat because in by my own hunter, see, Michini, Chini de Michini Pa. Person and the name me a pa, but you see me by our Mochino, see me tea or not to say person. Mamma sight me now. Tama Mistati, Mistati Abrabano. Amazing. 
but my me also anger and me pity as the sea yare ayade. A mama, my baby, a corano, yes, a metihua, a semi soon because yare inti mamma and papa. Say, I come and go. Because any day, In this shared journey of adversity, Kutsi Dude mirrors the challenges faced by James. With the bandage adorned with healing herbs wrapped around his head, the 60-year-old former driver has been under the tender care of the witch doctor for two years. Despite the trials edged into his journey, Kutsi Dude speaks with gratitude for the transformative works of the witch doctor. More and more patients profess their belief in the path of recovery, attributing their healing to the mystical powers of the gods. Awe <laughs> I'm <laughs> Nipano, <laughs> Traditional medicine also comprises that of the spiritual and then the physical. Because, yes, from the physical, it goes or transcends into the spiritual, where they go and then find out what exactly is wrong with the person that have been brought as maybe sick. And then they get directions as to how or what they should do for that person to be cured. It's sad that children end up here. Urban Lifestyle Radio Station.
And that was the first part of Searching for a God by Godwin Asideba. Part two comes out next week. Yeah, January 31. Okay. Mm. Hey, this long month. Can uh, you next imagine? week is still <laughs> January. January. But very exciting indeed. And I'm sure if you go onto uh, our socials, you can get a playback of episode one. But we thought uh, we don't want to leave you out of this very exciting piece. Of course, when part two is out, we'll talk some more with Godwin. And uh, we'll also allow you to experience it. Godwin, very grateful. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you for having me. Nobody knows tomorrow.